Paisley, a town with an eventful past that tells a story of Scottish kings, weavers, poets and monks. Their story can still be told to this very day. There's one story that hasn't been told, and that's about the Paisley punks from the 1970s to the early 80s. One, two, three, four! Initially a London phenomenon, was by summer 1977 filling the pages of three main British weekly music papers, Sounds, Melody Maker and NME, as the infection spread countrywide in successive waves through the late 70s. So here we are, we're at the original bungalow, which is at the bottom of Renfrew Road. As you can probably see right now, it's turned into a Japan street food takeaway. A bar that is so rich in punk folklore that in 2018, the bar's story was presented as a musical in Paisley's Town Hall. Owned by Paul Humphreys, live music was a scene of way of attracting more customers to the bar. Initially, he put on acoustic nights not knowing what was just about to happen. Glasgow played host to concerts from many of the biggest punk acts at the time. A particularly raucous 1976 gig by the Stranglers, however, led to Glasgow City Council banning bands from the popular punk movement from performing Scotland's largest cities. We couldn't play in Glasgow initially because the council had banned punk. Then there was an unofficial ban. There'd be a Stranglers gig at the city halls in Glasgow and it got a bit rowdy and the council decided on the back of that and all the sensationalist headlines in the, in the press about Six Pistols and the um, Bill Grundy TV programme, all that kind of thing, they were just decided that Glasgow had enough violence without, <laughs> without putting a soundtrack to it. Young Glaswegians' appetites for punk in the late 70s was impossible to satisfy unless they were willing to travel the 11 miles down the M8 motorway, Paisley became the centre of the universe for punk rock in Scotland. I think Glasgow wasn't allowing punk bands in. I mean, I think the Stranglers were actually banned from playing in Glasgow at one point. Which was kind of an extraordinary thing when you look back on it. We had to look around for other places to play and Paisley just happened to be on the doorstep perfectly outside the Glasgow boundary, so it fitted the, the council rules. Soon UK touring bands that were finding it difficult to get a gig in Glasgow looked to the bungalow as a touring venue. Paul enlisted the help of Loudon Temple, then the bands such as The Fall, Altered Images, The Psychedelic Furs, The Skids, The Zips and many more came to play at the bungalow. Well, I'm Loudon Temple. I used to book bands into the bungalow bar Distant memory for me, but as far as I can recall, between 79 and 81. But just to give you a few examples, for instance, and this is over two or three months at the start of 1981. We're asking specifically about punk bands. It's Excess Discharge, who were a local band. Liberty Bodies, who weren't quite punk, but they were, they were left of centre. The Angelic Upstarts, big band. Restricted Code, Saigon, a local band. You wouldn't call them punk, but... They had something to say, they were making headway. Defiant Pose, another Paisley band. We've got uh, The Exploited from Edinburgh, probably one of the biggest, maybe the biggest punk band from Scotland. The Stilettos. The, the, the Q-Tips came up from London to play a big band with a brass section. And they said it was one of the best gigs they'd ever played. Paul Humphrey said the bungalow went from phoning and tracking down bands to play there to bands queuing up to get a gig. If you wanted to play the bungalow, you quite often had to audition on a Saturday afternoon. Aztec Camera, I think, played their first ever gig in the bungalow bar on a Saturday afternoon. It was almost an audition they did. And of course they went on to become a very big band. The first punk activity, Paisley was provided by Fire Exit, who played at Paisley Tech and local band, The Sneaks, who enterprisingly hired the Renfrew School Hall for regular Thursday night gigs. Fire Exit were regulars at the bungalow. My name's Jerry, Jerry Attrick, I've been called for years, so Jerry Attrick, the band's Fire Exit. 
uh, formed in 1977, so in my 44th year. I organised the first big uh, gig I did with Fire X, it was uh, in the Paisley Tech, and it was in uh, December. The bungalow was great, it was, uh, you had different types of bands coming up, so you, you had all your local bands coming in, and then gradually bringing in bands up from London like the Cockney Rejects. It was good, Edinburgh bands, we, we were on once with the Scars, a couple of other bands, so it, it was great, it started building up a good circuit for Paisley, but these were the kind of gigs you were doing. You got a good crowd, they were all midweek, uh, or Friday nights. But, but because of that then, the audiences in Paisley were desperate to see punk music, well they were seeing it first time, so they had an appetite for it. The bungalow was at more grassroots level and many local artists were now benefiting from the influx of bigger names at the venue by the way of support slots. And it just grew and grew and grew and so you would then get people from Ayrshire saying can we come up and play with you? And they would come up and do three songs. You only had three songs, I come up and up. It kind of grew into a scene. So people from all over Glasgow, so it just expanded. It was. It was, you know, the friendship with everyone, it was good. And it got to the stage where we were being contacted by bands from America, even, who were coming over to tour and wanted to make sure they played the Bungalow Bar. That's how big a reputation it got. And one of the things I loved more than anything about what we did there was, it, it, gave, it presented us with the chance to showcase young emerging talent that would never otherwise have got a chance to play. Another venue that benefited from the Glasgow fallout was the Silver Thread Hotel on Black Hall Street, once advertised as Scotland's leading disco night spot. The hotel venue began to attract bigger punk names such as the Rosillos, Boomtown Rats, Fabulous Poodles, Elvis Costello and Attractions and the Buzzcocks. In fact, the Rosillos recorded an album at the hotel in 1977. Uh, the guy that booked the fans there was called Disco Harry and uh, it was a Wednesday night and what he would do is we'd bring all the bands from London up. And he, he saw an opening for moving uh, the punk audience in Glasgow out to Paisley and he used to run buses from uh, Union Street in Glasgow outside Bruce's record shop and um, it was twofold, he was, he was promoting his own gigs that he was putting on but he was also um, picking up gigs that had been cancelled at the last minute and maybe the act wanted to come to Paisley to play instead of Glasgow so they would have buses ready to take them through. There's, there's a wee point where you can go up, well, I can get up when a little bit of a but can be loose. You know, it's me too, we have a bag, no, that's a punky, 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 The Paisley Punks were really passionate about their music and were regularly seen in all their glory hanging outside the many Paisley record shops such as Stereo One, which was in Moss Street, the Record Market in Brimland Street, Cuthbertson's on Gilmer Street, and the Record and Card Centre in the Piazza, and also the Record Exchange on Canal Street. It used to only be a couple of years and then grew into a handful of years, and, and there would be more and more places you would meet up. So the, the punks started gathering and then, you know, taking off. And more importantly, forming their own bands, because young guys were seeing punk in their own town and being um, energised to to try it themselves. But Paisley had his own record label. There was the local record label here, Groucho Marxis Records, which was a co-op, a like musicians cooperative with the band. A local label sprang up, Groucho Marxist Records, and there were four bands fully stoked with anti-establishment venom and targeting all of the various ugly isms. Here we are at the original TUC building, this was the Groucho Marx's record company, a small concern run by 
Tommy Kays. The Groucho Marxist Records Cooperative issued two various artist EPs, an EP by Excess Discharge and a single by Defiant Pose during 1979 and 1981. And they started to put on gigs, but not just any gigs, it had to be with some sort of political message behind it. The Fegs, Excess Discharge, Urban Enemies and Defiant Pose had built a local following and a reputation that travelled well beyond their home patch. They each had a track on the EP Ha Ha Funny Polis, produced to highlight harassment of punks by police. Titles such as the Defiant Poses, Fight and Urban Enemies, Who Do You Hate, both from the Ha Ha Polis EP were released. Mike Clark, whose article about the label and about the Paisley punk scene sums up the five tracks on the first EP, Spectacular Commodity, as being defiant, shambolic and irrepressible. The thing about punk music is that it... it, it you can't do it half-hearted. You, you can't play punk music as a band half-hearted because it just falls flat in its face. Um, and the audiences that come along to punk gigs are not there to stroke their chins and say, mm, that's interesting, interesting solo from the guitarist. <laughs> They're just there for a good night out, jump around and have fun. And that's you know, that, that's what it's about. If, if in the back of that, the band are putting across uh, messages about social issues or raising awareness about things that maybe are slipping through the net in the mainstream press, and that's getting through to um, younger kids, then great, that's, that's job done, you know. At this point, the local Socialist Workers' Party, led by Tommy Kays, began hiring the TUC club in Orr Square, Paisley, which succeeded in drawing talent such as the Fegs, Excess Discharge, Defiant Pose, Urban Enemies, Mod Cons, Sneaks, The Poems and Mental Errors all released tracks under the label. Soon Tommy Kays moved on to forming a Paisley chapter of Rock Against Racism, RAR, in 1978. This was 10 bands playing at the back of a trailer in a rainy Fergusley Park. The police nervously only allowed 10 minute sets, but a peaceful event prevailed. They, they, they did one or two festivals in Fergusley Park. I wasn't at them, but um, they were rowdy affairs by as far as I can remember. The lineup on the day was the Alleged, the Zips, the Dialectics, the Liberty Bodice, and other acts all hailing from Paisley and Renfrewshire were Urban Enemies, Defiant Pose, Sneaks, Excess Discharge, The Fegs and Mental Errors. And there was a there was a big square area in the middle, grassed area, and that's where they had the festival and it was just like a flatbed truck with a PA on it and a back line and there was about, it was about 10 bands, but the whole square was ringed with, with police police fans, um, they just reckoned that, you know, based on all this sensationalism about punk, that this would be an ideal place for there to be a riot and a battle, and so they, they came well prepared, and nothing happened. <laughs> it is without doubt that the live music implosion during the era resonated with many local aspiring musicians and songwriters at the time. You know, the, the working class people knew right away we, this reflects where we're coming from, we're singing about what we're doing. So it didn't matter if we were from London or Birmingham, Manchester, Newcastle, you know, Glasgow or Edinburgh or Aberdeen. You, you were gradually all singing the same thing, you were all relating to the same music. It brought with new styles of music, fashion, image and live opportunities for years to come. But yeah, there was a real energy in Paisley that wasn't, you couldn't find elsewhere. Oh, Paisley, Paisley the big input because the, you know, the barriers were up in Glasgow. Paisley was always a town with a reputation for live music. I mean, before I came on the scene, there was gigs at the Watermill and there was a fairly good, strong folk club in Paisley. It, there's still a great scene in Paisley, still people. Paisley's one of these places Paisley, Renfrew, Linwood area, or the, the sort of Renfrewshire area. It's one of these places where people like music. 
So it could be a folk band, punk band, a rock band on the same bill. They'll come and they'll watch every band because they like music. So Paisley's kept that, let's support my own and others, you know. It's, it's always been a camaraderie in Paisley, aye.